You know what, I love science, and I'm really thrilled to have Dr. Stanley Chi here. He's an assistant professor at the Department of Bioengineering and of Chemical and Systems Biology at Stanford. Dr. Chi, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And he is going to tell us about clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. CRISPR. Yeah. CRISPR. You know about CRISPR. You've heard about CRISPR. Yeah, of course. What is CRISPR, Dr. Chi? Oh, CRISPR. Crispy fish? Crispy, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Oh, oh, I no. always order the crispy bacon. <laughs> so I love the crispy uh, is bacon. Is CRISPR a tool? Uh, is it a uh, technology? Is it a system? Is it something? Yeah. Is, what is it? So CRISPR is a biological system. And uh, so it exists before we knew about it. It exists, yeah, before we knew, and we knew it for a long time already, 30 oh. years. Oh, okay. okay. But we haven't realized how to use that and mm. what is that for a long time, until very recently, yeah. that we start using that for as a technology for genome engineering. So clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. These are repeated DNA sequences that are the same backwards and forwards. That's exactly right. And did, what did we think they were for? Oh, that's a great question. So when people first saw that through sequencing in bacteria, like mm -hmm. in E. coli, and people don't know what's about, and they only know they are repeats. They saw it there. They saw it there. But it could have been junk DNA. It could be junk DNA, but fortunately, they are not junk DNA. What's otherwise. it for? It's for, uh, actually, it's an immune system for bacteria. You know, mm -hmm. we, as humans, we have immune system. Sure. Help us fighting virus, fighting yeah. cancers. But what about bacteria? Think about the single cell simple organism, see how to fight virus, how to fight bacteriophages, because they live in a wild environment. And that's what this CRISPR for. It's actually a very interesting story how they refine their function, because a group of scientists from Danisco a long time, I mean, not a long time, like nine years ago. That's a long time. In yeah, that's a long time. time. Yeah. 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 They did experiments in yogurt bacteria. Uh -huh. You know, they face a problem that yogurt bacteria constantly got contaminated by bacteriophages. As a result, it cost them a lot of money to... Their yogurt went bad. Yeah, yeah yogurt went bad. Dangerous, yes, you right? Throw it away. Yeah. yeah. Then they engineered CRISPR, hypothesizing that CRISPR can help bacteria fight these phages. Mm. So and it's like teaching these bacteria how to fight infection better. Exactly. That's that. Then they succeeded. It's uh, like, wow, this blows Are they mind. modifying the CRISPR genes? Yeah, they modify the CRISPR genes, the, the sequence sitting between the repeats. And then they change that to the exact same sequence as a, as a, as a phage. So, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So they actually borrow sequences from the enemy. Right. That's how the CRISPR works, because CRISPR identifies their enemy mm. by perfectly matching uh -huh. the anime sequence. That's, mm. that's how, how they know. How does it relate yeah. to DNA, then? Because the people are doing splicing DNA to change yeah. things a bit. How does the CRISPR relate to DNA, then? That's a, I mean, it's a fascinating story, because after that, CRISPR is completed, but then in 2012, yeah. um, Dr. Jennifer Downer and the other collaborator from UC, Ber UC Berkeley find, actually, you can use a single protein Mm. and a single RNA and design the RNA to match the genes that you want to modify. Mm -hmm. And then you can cut the DNA. If right. you think this, CRISPR, I mean, I would say Cas9 in this case because it's only a... D-Cas9. That's D-Cas9, that's my stuff, but if you say Cas9, Cas9 is the first like a component from CRISPR that people find yeah. useful because it's just so simple. It cuts DNA like a pair of scissors. Then you can modify the sequence at the cutting site. Huh. And so people are making hybrid creatures or hybrid plants. Um, this is something that Monsanto does, right, on a yeah. pretty regular basis. There's genetically modifying food. Mm. Is this uh, like that? You're splicing yeah. genes like that? It's kind of similar, but, but different. But with a different goal, but too, With different right? goals, yes, different yeah. goals, but and also with very high precision. Mm. Because when you talk about modifying genes, our genome or the uh, plant's genome is huge. Right. Are you, are, you, are you talking about you want to precisely change this gene while not affecting any other genes in the genome? Yeah. If you, do, if you, do, if you cannot pr promise that, then you basically run huge risks. Of yeah, because you could create... Who knows? All sorts Whatever, of weird right, yeah, things. Weird right. things, yeah, right. exactly. But is it, so is it easier to modify the CRISPR sequences? It's fairly easy. Okay. I can tell you that uh, high school students come to my lab just during summer, work for a week. No kidding. Become an expert on that. So tell us some of the applications. Applications? Concerned. So I would say that 
We started CRISPR from a slightly different angle because we started DCAS9. What is DCAS9? DCAS9 is dead Cas9. Mm -hmm. oh. We make Cas9 dead. Cas9 is cut DNA. It's cutting DNA. We don't want them to cut DNA because that's dangerous. That can mm. that can modify the DNA. And also you modify the DNA forever. Right. Permanently. Right. It and reproduces that way forever. Right. Yeah. Something goes wrong. How yeah. do you reverse yeah, that? Yeah. Mm. We create DCAS9 because we want to make sure we don't modify any real physical DNA. By the same time, we want to change the function of the cells. So that's why it's dead. It's dead because it's not cutting DNA, but it still can be used as a GPS to perfectly find the a location in the genome, and then you can do something on it. For, for example, we can control how this protein become, uh, how this DNA become a protein. So you don't actually modify the DNA. You find the DNA that is beneficial, right? And you encourage it to to become a protein, to become a protein, more or more protein or less protein. Mm. How that connected? And have a better effect. How better effect? In fighting disease primarily? Exactly. For example, I can give you a, uh, one example because it's still ongoing, ongoing research project. We are working really hard on that, like no right. sleep. Right. <laughs> and what do, you, what do you hope to accomplish? Accomplish, for example. Yeah, five, ten years from now, really what like will you have accomplished? Cure disease. Cure some disease. Really? Which ones are on the short list? <laughs> Let's see. Um, Which ones should I get? FBS on there? <laughs> FBS on there? Fat bastard syndrome? syndrome? Yeah. yeah. We got that one. That what you, tell us what you're, yeah. what you're working uh, on. One disease we would really like to work on, like you mentioned, cancers, right? Yeah. Cancer is yeah. fairly complicated. Uh, this, I mean, 30, 40 years of research on cancer, called oncology research, mm. tells us it's really hard to define cancer as a single gene disease. It's not only a gene that's causing cancer, it could be multiple genes right. interplay mm. with each other, yeah. right. got changed. And some genes become more, some genes become less, they become abnormally expressed. Right. And we would like to use our technology to simultaneously modify the expression, correct their expression back. Mm. So when a cancer occurs, you could conceivably use this gene therapy to actually cure the cancer. That's one hope. That's the one hope. And now, would you have to do it personalized? In other words, would everybody at Stanford like be working on Steve Jobs' cancer, <laughs> which would actually have been worth it probably, like yeah. to try to keep him around yeah. for a little bit longer? It's pretty, it is pretty personalized. It's very it's personalized, pretty, right? It's pretty personalized. Yeah. And uh, another reason comes from stemming from the complex biology be be behind cancer, right. because everyone's cancer might be slightly different. Cancer right. is really that it is describing an outcome more than the disease itself. It's to say right. what the cell growth is, uh, is out of control, but what's causing that is there's many possible There's reasons, many right? possible, but yeah. no matter what kind of cause, cancer means the function of the cells become wrong. Right. Mm. And right. we want to use this tech CRISPR to correct their function God. without changing the sequence. We don't want to create like so you can point them in the right direction and encourage them to go that way. Exactly, exactly. Amazing. Would it be able to reverse cancer? Like once cancer occurs, it like could cure it. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm optimistic, right? Wow. That's why I'm doing research. You've also right? talked about yeah. curing diabetes. Type, 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 type one diabetes. Type type one or type two. Or Let's type say two. type one. Like type one means I mean type two, type one means. The, Childhood the, the, diabetes. Yeah, the patients lose the gene to right. in, to express insulin, or maybe the gene got silenced. Right. Not not working. Type two means like the patients develop their own resistance to insulin. Right. Right. So we would like to think about along the line. For example, if the patient's gene for expressing insulin is silenced, then can we use the DCAS9 to switch on this gene wow. to make the cells, the pan pancreatic cells, cells working again. Mm. Or in the case that the patients hate somehow the, the cells start hating the insulin, they right. get rid of insulin. They're resistant. Yeah, yeah can we suppress those cells? Wow. Usually those cells are immune cells. Let, let, let's stop them from doing that. That's How long bad. have you been working on this in this field? How do we? That's a, that's a how new... long have you been working on uh, this? How long? Yeah. Oh, I've been working on this since 2010. So in how much, in terms of the progress in the last six years, where did you think we would be? How much, you, are we further along than you thought or the, exactly where you thought we would be? In 2010, where did you think we'd be? Further along or where we are or? I think the field moves faster than everyone has imagined. That's right. what I want to hear. Right. See, this is yeah. the good news. When, <laughs> I, when I speak to a lot of people in your field, yeah. uh, synthetic biology, a lot of different fields, they, they actually don't believe they've gotten as far as they have, right. which to me means whatever they're predicting 
they might be under predicting and it could right. actually impact people over 40 over 50 they might actually catch the tail end might not be too late for us it, we we might for not you it's not but for me uh, it might not well, be too it feels like can you, you hurry up uh, yeah. in fact let's uh, we'll let you go Stanley. Yeah, you get got back stuff to, work. to do <laughs> oh thank you i got back to keep it. working I on the research it. it's dr stanley cheese <laughs> assistant sleep professor is sleep is of, uh, in the department of bioengineering of chemical and systems biology at stanford doing fascinating work where can we learn more is there a website uh, for dcas9 yeah there's, there, we have a lot of information on our website, lab website, and also we publish papers. And also, I hope just can personal chat. I'm very open to that. Oh, that's uh, great. Email. Come visit. I'm so glad you came by. Yeah. And is uh, there a publication that you read? Like, is there like a yeah, what do you read for this? this? Yeah. Like, if you wanted to like start reading about it and get more, in, like, is there like a newspaper about this, or a magazine, or a website that a blog? Uh, there, there, there are quite. Quite some reports. Um, Which one? The, the FBS the, Times. Really big. Times amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. For example, there. I mean, <laughs> there is a new. There is a new article about the non-editing based genome engineering technology on the Atlantic. So you can possibly. At the read. Atlantic. Yeah, Atlantic. Yeah. Yeah. Atlantic. Fascinating Fascinating stuff. Great. I'm so excited about. Keep this. working. Thank yeah. You. It keeps, Thank keep you. up the good yeah. work. If, next time you come back, you could just cure me. We'll. Yeah, we'll absolutely. Be, we'll I hope I will bring a real therapeutic here. Yeah. Right here. Just a little. Will it be a shot? We'll have to get the machine. Hopefully it's a pill. A pill. Hopefully. Easy right? peasy. Right? Like, how, to to how to imagine? How to imagine?